All right, we are going to talk about my overnight long position tonight, and it is a perfect PDT play. Coming up next. All right, you can see the daily chart here. Uh, this is AVGR. This is one of the biggest uh, percent gainers of the day. Uh, you can see at tons of volume right here. Wow, almost 50 million shares traded. Um, now, you can see looking at this is a one year chart. Um, actually, it's not even a one year chart. Here's a one year chart. So you can see this thing has just gotten absolutely decimated, it's gotten killed. Um, but nevertheless, you'll hear some of the gurus talk about, oh, I'm not ever going to trade that because. It has such a horrible long history, a long-term chart. Okay, well, the thing that the reason why I got into this one, despite the chart, um, price action is king. You have to always remember that. Uh, and and if you see this period right here of consolidation, where it consolidated down here in the ones for about three months. Now, when a stock like this consolidates for uh, for some time, like it has. That's like a resting period. It's like a resting period, and then whenever it breaks out of that, a lot of times they can really run for several days. Um, now I have no idea how long this is gonna run. Um, I long overnight, um, and this play actually is the exact same play that I played last week. Gap fill close, um, exact same play as I played last week. B L N K. You can see this one. Let's go to a five minute chart. I went over this one last week. It's the exact same thing. Um, BLNK, they put out good news. They put out good news. Stock gaps up huge. Fails the beginning, finds support, and then it closes near its highs. Or it closes near at least the opening price. This one's even stronger than that one. So AVGR, this is a gap fail close a la uh, Stephen Ducks. So here we go, five minute chart. Um, this thing gapped up, I think it was like over 50%. So you want these stocks to gap up at more than 50%, 50, 50 to 100%. Um, had a little spike at the beginning. Uh, it it fails. I wasn't even paying attention to it at this time. Uh, I didn't. It didn't catch my attention till the 190s. Um, I seen it hit this double top right here it pulled back I actually got long one time right here I got almost a perfect entry at 196 and then my wife wanted to go eat some lunch and had some things to go do and blah 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 and I didn't want to watch it plus it was midday so I really didn't think midday that it would that it would just go on this run so I just sold it for a two cent gain got out immediately then while I was at lunch I look at it while I'm out running errands with my wife. I'm like, holy smokes, this thing's going crazy. So I get home for the market close, and I know that I want this thing opened. It opened at uh, at a dollar ninety seven. So it opens at dollar ninety seven. Gap fill close. What happens is you have the gap, the huge gap, up in the morning in the pre market. It pulls back. It has to hold at least fifty percent of its gains. It holds at least fifty percent of its gains. And then it starts putting the higher lows in. See the trend? Higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. And then you want it to close. You want it to close at or above its open price, which was a dollar ninety-seven. You want it to close at or above its open price, the dollar ninety-seven. And it closed well above that. Uh, now my second entry where I entered it was I waited. I there's no way in hell I was buying it up here in the two forties because I figured. Um, you know, we still got, you know, an hour, an hour left till the market close. I'm not thinking this thing's just going to keep running for another hour. So I'm waiting for a pullback. Boom. You get this hard slap back and that's, that became my entry spot. Um, I entered in three places when it pulled back my first entry, I kind of chased it on a bounce right here. I got in at like 217. I added some at 240. 14 and then I almost bottom ticked it uh, at, at 205. I actually just put the order in at 205 and didn't even expect it to get filled 
and it filled. So I just put it above two dollars because I figured at minimum a whole round number of two dollars would hold. So I put it a few cents above the two dollar mark to make sure that I would get a fill and it, I pretty much bottom ticked it right there. So um, I had three different entry points. Um, now if you're under the PDT, you could enter three different times because you're not going to sell. You're not expecting to sell till overnight. Um, now keep in mind with the PDT, let's say that you entered a stock in the middle of the day, you bought it once and you sold it three different times. If you, Every time you sell that, every time you press that sell button, that counts as a day trade. So be aware of that. I made that mistake whenever I was in PDT. Um, every time you press the sell button, it'll count as a day trade. Um, so I, uh, I, so then I watched it. I figured after hours have a gap up. It it did gap up, and I got out at I sold half of it at two thirty three. So I had an average of two dollars and twelve cents, I think it was, and it gapped up to, and I got half my shares out at two thirty. And then tomorrow morning, I'm expecting. Uh, a pre-market gap up. Um, I'm expecting a pre-market gap up, possibly to break these highs of 240. Um, I don't know how high this thing goes tomorrow, but I will be up early, ready to sell into the pre-market gap up. Um, and that is the gap fill close. Once again, you want your stock gapping up pre-market um, over 50% at minimum 50%. It fails. At, it fails at the market open. It, it has to hold at least 50% of its gains. If it doesn't hold 50% of its gains, then the likelihood that it's going to be able to come back from that, it reduces your odds of that coming back significantly. So it holds 50% of its gains, and then it starts putting in the higher lows. Um, and then the last thing, the last thing of the criteria is, is it, it closes um, at or above your its open price which was $1.97. So tomorrow morning, I will uh, look to sell into a pre-market gap up, like I already said. And if you notice, um, BLNK from last week, same exact setup. Uh, didn't gap up quite as much as this one did today, but look at, I was out in the morning. Pre-market gap up. Um, so we may not get the gap up since it already gapped up quite a bit this afternoon. But I'll be up early to check that out. So same exact thing. You can see the setup. Boom. You sell into the pre-market gap up. Same thing, AVGR. Same exact thing. Same exact setup. So hopefully tomorrow morning we're going to see this thing up here in the 260s, 270s. God knows where we could see it. It's a low float and there are no shares to borrow at E-Trade. So... Uh, I will do a follow-up video on where I exited tomorrow morning. Hopefully, it's a green video and not a red one. But I think the odds are in my favor on this. Uh, thanks for watching and subscribe.